At that time, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And a report about him went out through all the surrounding country. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as he was and as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unscrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him and marveled at the gracious words that were coming from his mouth. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, once a man went to meet his former boss. Went in the morning and asked his secretary that I had an appointment with him, with the boss. His former boss, the secretary said, I'm sorry, sir, you won't be able to see him because unfortunately last night he had a terrible, severe heart attack and he died. He passed away. The man returned and after a couple of hours went back to the secretary and said again, I want to meet your boss. The secretary said, you were here in the morning and I told you that unfortunately is no more. The man hears the secretary and leaves. But again, after a couple of hours, comes back and asks the secretary once again, Can I meet, the, meet your boss? The secretary said, Why are you doing this? I've already told you that he's no more. And the man replies, Please don't get mad with me. Because I had borrowed a huge sum of money from my former boss. And he would come every day with thugs and trouble me. And I had to sell everything that I had to repay. And I have brought the money. But the very news that he is no more brings so much of joy to me. I just want to hear it over and over again. My dear friends, we all love good news, don't we? But good news for some could be... For each one of us, good news could be very different. It all depends on what circumstances we are in. Like if you are someone who had gone to the hospital and given your tests and really anxious about how the tests are going to turn out and you get the tests and everything is normal. That's good news for you. Or you are someone who had applied for a job and you were desperate to find one and they call in and say, you've been selected, that you have got the job. That's good news for you. Or if you are a student who really worked hard to get into a university and then finally you get the letter saying you've been accepted. That's your good news. Or there's something that you've been striving at work and you've been trying to solve it and you're struggling to find an answer. And then by God's grace, you, the problem is solved. That's good news for you. Or in general times, so, you know, Sometimes when a couple is married, every time they come back, the parents would ask, is there any good news? And for them, it means, is there any news of a new child in the family? Good news could mean different things to different people. But today in the gospel, Jesus takes up the scroll and stands in front of his own people, the place where he had grown up. And he would read from the passage from Isaiah and he would say, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has 
anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. What is this good news? He says, He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. In other words, the good news is to say that the Messiah has arrived. That the Savior is now here in flesh for them to behold. That the prophecy of Isaiah has been fulfilled. And people did rejoice. They were glad to see him. They marveled at his words. Dear friends, every word that is spoken to us from God is our good news. The Bible is given to us as God's good news to us. Because the words of Jesus transforms our life. Wherever we are and whatever condition we are, when we allow God to speak to us, He has the power to bring us relief, to set us free, to heal us, to console us, to bring Unity once again into our lives. Today, Jesus speaks to you and to me. And he says the same words that he has come to proclaim good news to each one of us. What is that good news that we yearn to hear from Jesus? He's here for us. It is up to us to accept that good news with faith and with love. And with trust. And that's what we hear in today's first reading. We hear that we can only love God by loving our neighbor. And how do we know that we love God? It is by following his commandments. And his commandment is to love one another. And today, once again, when the good news comes to us, it's not only good news to, to hold on to ourselves, but it is also a good news that needs to be shared with one another. The good news is so powerful, it cannot be kept for ourselves. It needs to be shared. And therefore today, as we come to the altar, as we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and accept his word as good news to us, let us also pray for the grace that the power of the good news, the word of God, the word of our Lord and Savior, may be so powerful within us that we may have the joy to go and share it with those who need to hear it. Amen.